there, back, 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 and get, 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 get with the chat, 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 chat cafe, where real students talk about real issues. <laughs> I'm Herbina Adekoya, <laughs> and today we're talking about code switching. Do you guys know what that is? Mm -hmm. I do now. Yeah. Yeah. All right. <laughs> so for my audience that do not know what code switching is, code switching is when we send a representative to speak instead of being who we truly are. It's an idea that you are expected to integrate. So basically, it's the whole idea of I'm going to switch personalities, switch appearances, switch the way I talk, switch the way I act in front of different audiences. Mm -hmm. So, how do you all use code switching in your everyday life? Do you feel it's necessary? I feel like, especially at school, like when you're trying to convince a teacher or even just talk to a teacher about something, about a grade or a test, like you're definitely going to be more polite, like try to use correct grammar to get what you want. Yeah, I used um, a certain word Talking to a teacher yesterday, she was like, you didn't need that. I was like, okay, I apologize. <laughs> I didn't mean it. <laughs> also, like, um, when it comes to the person I am in school and all that stuff, when talking to, like, teachers or, like, to my friends and stuff is different to when I'm at home with, yeah. like, my dad and everything. Like, I'm going to admit, <laughs> I don't have the cleanest language when talking to my friends. Mm -hmm. So then coming back home, it's just like, huh, throw all those cursors away. <laughs> yes, Bro. mom. <laughs> <laughs> For me, especially, it's not just like, oh, I'm switching between te my teachers and home, especially with my teachers. Some of them have become friends to me. Mm -hmm. So when I walk in, I just be like, hey, what's up, girl? Let me tell you about what happened the <laughs> other day. So, you know, I tell them about my personal lives. You know, I don't cuss around them or anything like that. When I'm with my friends, I definitely roll up my sleeves. I'm a little bit more loose, you know. I'm just like, yeah, what's up? You know, I, you know, I just wanted to talk to you. When I'm around my mom, you know, it's just like I'm the most, you know, polite person in the world. I'm so, you know, straight. I'm just like this, you know. I'm like, hey, mom. <laughs> you know, you know, it's just like that. So, um, oh, go ahead. <laughs> I think for me, um, being oh, I am the board member. So being a board member has really ch has changed everything. Mm -hmm from how I normally interact with friends, family. I've always been somebody that I don't use profanity. I don't use profanity, so that's not even an issue for me. But the way I would use certain slang around my friends compared to, or even um, teachers, and I'll like pull out the race card and say that sometimes I feel as if I have to use certain grammar. I have to not be angry. And I'll be honest, like at the board meetings, I try my best not to be the angry black girl mm -hmm. because I don't want my point to ever be perceived as, Oh, I'm just angry. I'm angry. Rather, passion. Mm -hmm. It's literally just passion. When I'm get when I get passionate, I might get angry. <laughs> but there's a stereotype that there's the angry black girl, and eventually you become the angry black girl, and your point is not listened mm -hmm. to. Your yeah. point is missed. So then, but I'm in school, and everybody knows me as a very passionate person. Yeah. But in school communities, majority black of us, we're all black. So I can I can be mm -hmm. passionate yeah. and not care about it coming off as an angry black girl. Yeah. Yeah, I feel like. It's necessary, like there's two types of code, it's code switching, right? That's the word. Yeah. So like there's one where obviously I feel like everybody in the world has has to automatically, like when you get around friends, you know you're yourself or whatever, but like if you're going for an interview, I'm not going to go in an interview talking like, oh, hey girl, you know, blah, 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 because obviously I need something from you. I respect you. I have a level of respect towards you, how I would talk to teachers. But then there's a type where like you would unnecessarily not be yourself. I don't know, maybe to feel accepted by yeah. other, like a group of audience. I feel like if you have to try to change yourself to be accepted by a group of Audience, you shouldn't be around that those kind of people today. in the yeah. first place. Yeah. Honestly, don't try to be someone. Yeah, I was literally talking about because in my AP English class, we have to read this book. First of all, we've been reading books all year. Mm -hmm. I'm not. She's a, not I, reading the book, so we're not going to be somebody who's not, not any of those books. <laughs> Shout out to Google for coming through for me for the yes, book, Okay, yes. I'm not a reader, and I will not pretend to be. Like sometimes I read in class just to say, okay, let me act like I know what's going on. <laughs> and I just get, like, I'm just not a good reader. So, yeah. like, I'm no, I can read, obviously. I'm not a bad <laughs> reader. But, like, I'm not a reader. Like, I don't like to read. Like, I don't read, like, for fun. So I don't try to be somebody that I'm not. And I feel like that's really unnecessary in the sense that 
if you have to try too hard to like be accepted or try too hard to be funny or cute, it's just really no point. Don't stress yourself. It's really, you know, but then obviously there's that default code switching that like obviously if I'm walking into somewhere that I'm like a business place or a professional place, I automatically know how to act when I'm there. But if I'm like at home or with my friends, I can be myself. Yeah. So even when you're at home, understood, you switch. Now, there are different types of switches. Do you switch the way you speak? Do you switch the way, um, in a sense, I'm not going to start speaking in my African tone right here, right now. So you find yourself when you get home switching. Yeah. You, so you guys can like agree and testify. Mm -hmm. You find yourself when you get mm -hmm. home switching. Yeah. You find yeah. yourself mm -hmm. when you get home, when you are with your friends switching. You find yourself when you're in school switching. Yeah. Do you ever feel like some of those parts are not a part of your identity? Honestly, okay, so I come from like um, a middle school, elementary school that was like predominantly white, okay? So it came to this situation where, cause when I was younger, I knew like I was fluent in Spanish, but then like as like school and everything kept going on, I just noticed I need to stop speaking like Spanish cause my accent wasn't really like, I felt uncomfortable with my accent. I felt I didn't like how there were some words that I didn't know. Mm -hmm. So then I went into like reading cause I wanted to get rid of my accent. Mm. I ended up getting rid of a lot of Spanish in general. Mm -hmm. And so now it feels like I don't belong in like places where it's like predominantly English and I don't belong in places where it's predominantly like Spanish because it's like I don't know enough of either. Mm -hmm. Right. Okay. That's very interesting. I've never, I haven't been, I have never heard that before. I think that's very interesting. So how do you, do you want to belong in certain conversations, certain places? Do you eventually wish you can be a part of them? I, okay. So when it comes to me speaking in English, I use, depending on where I am, like certain like words, I'll use bigger words when I'm like, you know, around like adults and like just situations like that. And then I'll just tone it down a bit when I'm with my friends. But then when I'm with my dad or with my cousins, they're all having this conversation in Spanish and I understand, but it's just my words can't catch up. You know, it's like, cause I think too much. And now it's gone to the process where I sound like I've only spoke English my whole life. Mm -hmm. So then it comes to the fact where when you try to change yourself, depending on the situation, you lose who you are. And I lost who I was. Like, it's mm -hmm. like, it felt, it feels as though like, I'm stuck between two places where I'm supposed to belong, but I belong in neither. Okay. Oh, I felt that. <laughs> I felt that one. That was deep. <laughs> yes, that was Wait, so I have some chat cat um chat cafe social media responses about the whole um, code switching. Okay. So one person said yes. Around Caucasian people, I feel like I can't use the lingo I use around Black people. One. Okay. Another person said, oh, definitely. I mean, it's a necessary and natural thing depending on your comfort level and real relatability with certain people. But as for acting completely unnatural, it's a daily occurrence, especially around adults. I feel like I have to overcompensate because I know they already judge me based on my hair, clothes, or skin. Mm. Mm -hmm. So I need to prove them wrong. Mm. Mm. I definitely relate yeah. with you. Okay. Yes. One more person, one more, one more. Yep, my parents and I have a very formal way of speaking, especially with my dad and my mom. With different groups of groups of friends, I talk about I talk about act different. They basically talk different and act different. Mm -hmm. um, then in a professional setting, they are very serious but approachable. So I asked, do you believe all of these parts are a part of your true identity? They said, yes, I'm not hiding any of those parts from each other. Like my parents know I use slang with my friends. My friends understand that I have sides of me that I don't show. And professional ones are just dumb if they don't know I'm faking for a job. <laughs> <laughs> hey, you got to do what you have to do for a job. Why, why do you want to work here? You know why. <laughs> <laughs> Need a job. <laughs> there was this comedian um I, she was honestly spitting facts while she was like joking around and all that stuff and she was african-american and she was saying every day she kind of wakes up thinking how black am i gonna be today because it's like wow. to be honest it's like when you get into situations you're like if you are who you are how will people think of you yeah so me being hispanic and just like going out and being like, I can probably use my Hispanic, like, you know, slang and all that stuff, the cultural slang and everything, 
but how are people gonna look at me? I'm yes. probably gonna look like this immigrant girl yes. and all that stuff. That's yes. not mm -hmm. what I wanna be seen as. So then I have to like become what I'm not. Mm -hmm. yes. So you as an African, have you felt that way? You as a black, um, young black man, have you felt that way? Have you ever been in a situation yeah, where you just genuinely yeah. feel? Yeah, definitely. Like, especially like in elementary and middle school when people were childish and they're like, oh, do you speak African and stuff like that? It's always something that I've had to like. But now, obviously, I feel like um, that's something that, like me code switching, that's something that I can do comfortably. I don't feel uncomfortable doing it anymore because at the end of the day, when I'm talking to my parents, my parents only talk to me in French, so I respond in French, obviously. That's just natural. But, like, if I'm talking to you or if we're around our friends, like, you know, we switch our accents, you know. You know? You yeah, it's one know. of those things. We just switch our accents. But I'm um, kind of coming back to what you said, like, when um, – how you kind of lost yourself. I feel like a lot of people do that and then it becomes negative. Like, they're just running away. Like, and I thank God because me um, being somebody that was bullied because of, you know, where I was from, even though I was born in America, if I don't tell you that I'm African, you probably wouldn't guess because obviously because of my accent. Um, so one of those, it's one of those things um, where it's kind of sad that, you know, in America, which is supposed to be a land of opportunity, sometimes a lot of um, minorities find themselves struggling to fit in because people don't want to accept them. So now they have to change who they are. And then once they change who they are, it's hard to get back to who they were before. Mm -hmm. Like a lot of people come and now like they just try to fake this accent. And then now it literally sounds like you're reaching, like you don't like just be yourself really yeah. because at the end of the day, it's either you take me for who I am or you don't accept me at all with or without you, I will move forward. Especially so. for me, <laughs> especially for me, especially and I'm like growing up, I did grow up around a lot of white people. And then eventually I became, I had more black friends. And me having more black friends, they keep telling me, well, you're not black enough or Ooh. stuff like that. Mm -hmm. So when people tell me that, it's just like, just because what what for me it's like what does black black enough yeah. even mean for me it's just like this is have to be the, be right so like for me it's just like i want to i want to be myself mm -hmm. and if you can't accept me for you who, for who i am then you can go yeah and going mm -hmm. off of what you said back in um 2010 my parents moved my siblings and i to ghana so um i'm from the republic of benin so it's a francophone country so we speak french there but ghana is um an english-speaking country so um we moved to ghana so when i started school i kind of started school with like you know a positive like okay these are my people obviously the word from separate countries but I'm in Africa, so these are my people. So, but I, I still felt myself struggling to fit in because I didn't have their accent because I had an American accent. They're like, oh, um, um, where are you from? Well, you don't speak like us, so you right. can't sit with us or whatever. So it's something that I had to get used to. And I was so confused. I'm like, okay, in America, people say I'm African. Now I'm in Africa and my own people are still making me right. feel uncomfortable. So it's one of those things where don't even, like, you can't even depend on your own people to accept you. Like, people saying that you are too black, what does that even mean? Right, At right, the end of the right, day, right. we are the same exactly. skin color. Or, like, you know, there's some white people, some white people, black people will say, oh, oh, you're trying to be black. What right. does that what mean? Does that Have mean? you ever felt that, that way? What, is, what um, does that mean? I feel like in certain settings, like, people, I know, like, my friends and I, like, feel uncomfortable with, like, African Americans because we feel like we don't fit or we feel like we might, they might, like, not like us maybe because yeah. we're not the same as them. Mm -hmm. And then we try to conform and change our like our the way we speak or the way we act to fit in yeah. and I feel like that's really toxic but also I was just thinking about like when we go to college like this whole like how are we gonna act are we gonna have a new persona like a whole like different mm -hmm. college persona like totally different group of people like will we have to again switch our identity again to mm -hmm. like fit in with them and like we're so used to our day-to-day -day lives of switching at home or in school or at work or whatever but when we get to college like, we have to change it all again and I feel like that's gonna be really interesting if you're moving to college like, she just had, like, when yeah. she moved, like yeah. you're is that the person you're gonna be all the time yeah. then at yeah. what point are you gonna go back to yourself exactly. and I think it's the going back to the um, comedian that you brought up mm -hmm. I always have to ask myself when I'm about to enter a certain setting which Halima am I going to be right now right. and sometimes it's just stressful it's stressful yeah. 
I want to be able to sit slouched and not sit like this. Yeah. Yes. I want to be able to feel as if, oh, I, di I just, and I think maybe I'm harder on myself. I just messed up in that word, oh, how you're going to think you're dumb. Mm -hmm. Or I just said something wrong, oh, they're not going to think you're smart enough. Right. Or I just said something like this, oh, they're going to think you're ghetto. And it's, it gets to a point where I'm just like, God dang it, I'm human, I just made a mistake. Mm -hmm. Or God dang it, I'm African and we say things like that. Or God dang it, I'm tired. <laughs> I'm like, tired. I'm, I'm, and I'm, and I don't know where the fine line is, and I think I, it goes back to the whole. At some point in time, are we in danger of who we are when we yeah. don't realize that this is either all a part of our yeah. identity, mm -hmm. yeah. or this isn't who we are when we code switch? I feel like when you get to the level where you're just so tired and stressed, like I feel that's where it becomes a danger for you because. Honestly, by default, we switch. When I leave out of this place, I'm not going to be who I am talking to everybody. Like, you mm. know, and before I got here, I wasn't who I was talking to everybody mm. when, you know. So it's one of those things where it's, it, I think it comes naturally, but where the fine line should be is between me doing it because it's just natural or me doing it because I feel forced. Once you feel forced, I feel like, and in a situation, I can't tell you to just be yourself because sometimes, you know, society won't accept that. Like, you're a student member of the board. There are some things you literally just cannot do because of an oath that you swore. So it's just yeah. a I character did, that, <laughs> it's a character that you always have to maintain. Yeah. But I feel like it's your reasoning behind it. You shouldn't feel like you're forced to because at the end of the day, when you swore that oath, you did it willingly at yes. the end of the day. So it's a, it's, a, it's a character that you have to, it's a, <laughs> character that you have to uphold intentionally and you have to know that at the end of the day I'm doing this for the better because I'm doing this because I want to and this is just what comes with it and I'll get over it by God's grace and honestly it's not who you are you just have to do this to get over it and then yeah, <laughs> yeah. when you when you yeah. said that there's like a situation where you feel forced to do it my dad he has an accent when he speaks English right because he's an immigrant so he like mainly speaks mm -hmm. Spanish so it's just in situations where like say we're at a restaurant and he has to order his food he won't say it he'll mm. say it to either me or my sister my mom's to, like you guys to went like, to school last you yeah. say it <laughs> so he would either say it to me or my sister in spanish so we'll say mm -hmm. it in english Understood. but my dad's accent isn't so bad it's mm. just the fact that in the situation he's ashamed of how mm. he speaks mm. dang will there ever be a time can we agree that there will Agree or disagree, will there ever be a time that code switching doesn't exist or will exist? I don't think there's yeah. a time. I don't no. think there'll ever be a time like that it doesn't exist. I yeah. think we need I think we need it, honestly. We do need it, but not in the negative way. Mm -hmm. We literally need it because like back to what we've all been saying, when we get to different settings, there are different not I don't want to say characters. Call for different, yeah, yeah, different, yeah. different, different settings. Means, yeah. But it's yeah. all me. Yeah, yeah, but it's all it's all me still. Mm -hmm. And like yeah. back with the accent thing. You know, like, for example, my mother is a degree holder, and she has an accent. But my father has a stronger accent, but he's also a degree holder. But my mother is way more confident than my dad. Like, my dad really won't, like, you won't know that he is a degree holder unless you really ask him because, I don't know, maybe he feels like he'll be judged or whatever. Mm -hmm. But my mother is very vocal, too vocal. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> too vocal. You know, and she's a good degree holder. So it's kind of, like, different for everybody. Some people take pride in the fact that, yeah, I'm a minority and I came to America and I did something, so you're gonna accept me with my accent, you know, because yeah. I can, you know. Yeah. So it's different, it's different for everybody. Everybody takes those kinds of things differently. So I'm loving, I love the conversation, but it's that time of the show where we're running out of time. But I just wanna say thank you all for joining me on this episode of the Chat Cafe. <laughs> Stay tuned for our next show and follow us on social media. Goodbye. <laughs> <laughs> Get him now.